You're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. A few weeks ago, I teased the pending release of the S132 with the sequence of images you're currently looking at. The S132 is an add-on for the IMSE 8080 and Kromemko Z1 replica kits from the high nibble. And the name is, again, a combination of uh, the two technologies that come together, something that uh, is a replica of the S100 bus, um, but using the ESP32 microcontroller. Um, now, there's a lot to cover to talk about the S132, so this will probably end up being a number of short videos rather than one long video. So what's the point behind the S132? Well, in its original release, the IMSE 8080 replica came with a, a web desktop to give you access to a range of peripherals that wouldn't be available um, otherwise. And so if we quickly recap uh, what the features of the web desktop were, uh, or some of the key input and output features, it provided a teletype, which was a VT100 emulation, the CRT, which is a character-based um, I.O. from the IMSE VIO card. It provided um, disk management and a disk library, uh, so you can change the disks in the four emulated floppy drives. It provided the Kromemko Dazzler um, graphics output, and including support for an analog joystick, connected uh, via USB, uh, replicating the functionality of the Kromemko D plus 7A I.O. board with an analog joystick attached. Well, at least these are the features uh, that the S132 aims to provide by other means. Uh, in addition to these I.O. features, of course, there's also the um, ability to look at the system status and to see a summary of some of the CPA front panel status lights. So let's have a look at how all of that is represented through the S132. So with the S132, when it boots, we're presented simply with the TTY device. And you would have recognized from the images of the PC board that there's a VGA connector and in the example shown, there was a um, USB keyboard connector, but this also comes with the option for a, supporting a PS2 um, key based keyboard. So as I said, when it boots, you're presented with the uh, just a VT100 terminal emulation. And just like on its um, companion or sort of similar product, the VT132, we can get into the standard uh, VT100 setup menus. And if we move through to the enhanced setup menu C, you'll see that uh, we're actually running the S132 build of the VT132. So this is a common code base between the, the two products. So if we drop out of the setup menus and uh, look at booting the v, uh, booting the MSA. Uh, I've actually got the, the MSA configured to boot directly to the VIO. So uh, what we'll do is actually now switch to the VIO screen. So just like on a Linux uh, console, you use Control Alt and the function keys to switch between pages or um, console devices. So I'll do a Control Alt F4 and we're now switched to the VIO. So I need to run, hit run on the IMSA before we see anything on the screen. And here we are, booted up into CPM on the VIO character mode output. Of course, we can switch back to Teletype, uh, the, put the con map the console to the Teletype with the CPM command stat. And so now switching back to the TTY device with Control Alt F1. And so here we are on the 
VT100 teletype, and we have the console, the CPM console. So that's two of the, the devices covered. We've got the VT100 emulation, the same as on the VT132. We've got the VIO, uh, character mapped IO page. But let's also have a look at the graphics uh, Dazzler device. So if we run the classic G demo and now do a control alt F5 to switch to the Dazzler, we'll get the Chromemco Dazzler output. So this is all going to the same VGA device uh, connected to the S132 and each console is um, taking control of the keyboard. So with a single keyboard and a single VGA connection, we have the Dazzler, we have the VIO, and we have the VT100. So there are our three main input output devices covered. Let's get the command prompt back. And let's now have a look at how the S132 supports uh, disk management and also um, interrogating the system status. So again, this is implemented as a new page, a new, con a new console. So we do go control alt F6 and we'll switch to the system menu. And you can see on the top line there, it's telling us that where the IMSA is currently running with the power on. We can have a look at the disks that are mounted. We can go down to a particular disk and eject it. We can choose a disk and mount a disk image. And so we now have all the, the disk management functionality that we need through the same um, VGA and keyboard interface. If we don't want to go as far as actually ejecting or mounting disks, we can just look at the disk library and the grayed out um, images are the ones that are currently mounted. We can go on and have a look at the various system information that we'd normally get through the sys device on the web UI, uh, desktop. So we can look at the guest information. That's the IMSA 8080 simulation in this case. We can look at the host device status. So this is details about the ESP32 and its network connection and connected devices. We can look at our environment variables that through our boot conf file, and we can look at the running tasks on the ESP32. We can also look at the content of the boot conf file and the system conf file through this interface, but we can't yet edit them from here. And finally, we can reboot the IMSA from this menu if, you, if we want to. And then finally, for this video, we'll just see that we have control over some of the front panel functions, such as being able to run and stop the IMSA. So we can go and do a stop here, and you'll see that the status on the top line has been updated to tell you that the IMSA is in wait state, even though the power's, but the power remains on. We come back to the CPA menu and do a start, a run, we can also reset and clear, so run it again. Um, and these four functions are also mapped to hotkeys. So we have Control Alt F9 through F12. So we can do a Control Alt F10, stop the MSA. Control Alt F9 will set it running again. 
So that's a quick look at the features of the S132 add-on. Um, it's currently in pre-production, just getting some final testing, and hopefully uh, it will be releasing fairly soon. Stay tuned for some follow-up videos that are going to go through some of the other functions, such as the analog joysticks and other uh, functions that are given, uh, that are available through the S132, and also a bit more of a sort of technical deep dive onto how it's all working.